Industries that are hot, sectors set to outperform the market. That's what's here in Zach's industry rank analysis. We are recording this fresh on the heels of some good news that came from financial stocks. Citigroup saying that they started the year with a profit. Well, they're not alone in that camp. Uh, other banks have said the same thing. But our senior market analyst, Charles Roplot, who is with me now, doesn't really see it that way. So on his radar this week are the financial stocks. So why, to you, is this not a bright spot? Well, I think you have to look at the track record of the CEOs. And in a word, pathetic comes to mind. <laughs> uh, you can look at Dick Fald. You can look at Alan Schwartz. You can look at John Thane. All those guys said how great their firms were, how their firms were physically sound, how they didn't need help. None of their firms exist anymore. So there's this long track record of bank CEOs saying things are good, we're fine, and then the reality is they're not. And when you look at Citigroup, you have to ask yourself, okay, you guys were too big and too blood before this crisis hit. Mm -hmm. You're getting massive help from the government. You can buy a bottle of water for about the same price as what their shares now trade at after two days of huge gains. Yep. Um, and suddenly we're supposed to believe that everything's great. Well, maybe if you're borrowing from the government at virtually zero and you're lending it out to people at 7% on mortgages and at 29% on credit cards, well, you know, you and I can make money with that type of model. So is that the only reason that margins in the sector have increased uh, is because of that and because of the fact that some of the competition has been eliminated? Well, I think you have to look across the board. I think by and large for most banks, actually, earnings estimates are continuing to fall. Earnings are getting worse. Uh, first quarter, actually, first quarter of 2008 wasn't very good. So if you look at year-over-year -year comparisons, well, your hurdle's lower. But I think, you know, there are a few firms that are actually doing okay. They've avoided the big mortgage mess. They've held it okay. Even Goldman Sachs, we've seen earnings estimates being revised upwards slightly over the past few weeks. So even in a disaster, there's still some, some firms that are standing that are doing okay. But by and large, the news out of the financial sector is not good. It's negative. The trends remain negative. And even if you put aside this entire mortgage mess, you have to look at what's going in the economy. More people are losing their jobs. More people are taking pay cuts. All that hurts their ability to pay back mortgages, to pay back credit card defaults. So, no, I don't see things really getting positive in the banking sector. There's a few bright spots, and some people might want to say, see, things are getting better. But the reality is things are not getting better. And as we look at earnings estimates, they're continuing to be cut. Good old-fashioned window dressing, as we used to call it in my <laughs> time. Uh, and add to that, you said credit card defaults. You've got still this... This uh, overhanging the market, uh, Big Ben Bernanke recently calling for an overhaul of the banking uh, regulations. You've got the mark-to-market rules issue out there. You've got the uptick rule issue still out there unresolved. All of that's still weighing on it, huh? It is, and I find the uptick rule actually very laughable. Barney Frank's talking about reinstating it. Um, and the uptick rule basically means you can't short a stock until the last trade is higher than the previous trade. Mm -hmm. um, and somehow the removal of that rule is being blamed for the market hitting new low, never mind that we're in a recession, never mind that you had gross mismanagement on the part of the banks, never mind that you we're looking at really going back to the recession, seeing the whole economy pare down. Um, and you also look at a lot of people looking at these banking stocks, looking at loans they shouldn't have made, saying, not only do I not want a part of this company, but I'm going to short it because I don't think the shares are worth what they're currently trading at. All that exists without the uptick rule, so I think it's a lot of hot air. But when you do look at market-to-market -market accounting, it is a big issue. Uh, there's no easy solution, and certainly a discussion of it would take far longer than we have tape on the camera. Right. Um, and then as far as the regulations that Bernanke's talking about, there's long been needed an update to the banking regulations. Uh, the SEC has been notoriously understaffed for years, so there are changes that need to be made. But for people looking at the financial sector, they have to understand that all this is going on. None of this shows up in the, fu in the fundamentals. None of this shows up on the charts. And so you're looking at some of this day-to-day -day evolving in terms of issues, and that makes it very difficult to trade the stocks, either going long or short. Um, and if you want to be aggressive and try to trade them, you need to understand that there is the reality that these stocks could do an interday reversal. So you really need to be glued to the quote screen. Uh, and if you're unwilling to do that and unwilling to literally keep one hand on the sell screen, regardless of your position, you're best off moving to the sidelines and just kind of waiting for things to stabilize, even if that means giving up some additional upside over the short term. 
All right, and in his weekly industry rank analysis, Charles also puts a nice section in there about suggestions for you, the investor, in light of everything coming out of this sector uh, this week. So I think you'll want to check that out at Zacks.com's homepage by going down the homepage, scrolling to the headline under the green banner that says Industry Rank Analysis, and it'll take you right to it. With Charles Roteblatt, I'm Terry Ruffalo.